The first question comes from Alex. Here's what Alex asks. Hi, Zach. You describe inhalation as a general posterior expansion of the spine to accept depressed abdominal contents, which causes a reduced lumbar lordosis, among other things. However, I've read that inhalation as causing an increased lumbar lordosis due to the diaphragmatic attachments to the anterior spine. The latter makes sense to me given the importance of exhalation in creating an ideal stack, but the concepts you have been describing very much do as well. It would be incredible, I'm sure he said it that way, if you could help me understand this, as I feel like this confusion confounds my ability to understand how the upper and lower parts of the ventral cavity, thorax, abdomen, and pelvis are functionally linked. Thank you. No, Alex, thank you. Question is, what the heck is the lumbar spine doing during inhalation and exhalation. So here's what I would say the lumbar spine is doing. Let's assume, and obviously this is a poor assumption, but if I have a resting position that is more lordotic in the lumbar spine, for those of you who don't know what lordosis is, basically if you see someone with that deep arch, imagine a arbitrary normal amount of that deep arch in the lower back. In that scenario, the sacrum is nutated, meaning it's tipped forward. Following me so far? Good, I'm happy to hear that. If the sacrum is nutated and the lumbar spine is lordotic, the pelvic floor, in particular the anterior pelvic floor, is going to be more ascended. If the pelvic floor is ascended, the viscera are going to be pushed upward. So that's just at rest, and let's assume that this is a full exhalation. You got residual volume and all that stuff. Life is good. Now, if I need to breathe in, which you need to do at some point, unless you want to die, you got to make room for air in the lungs somehow, some way, some shape or form, and you got to be able to pull air into the lungs. So the way that that happens is via this wonderful, sexy muscle called the diaphragm. The diaphragm sits like, you know, thorax up top, abdomen down low. The diaphragm is the partition between those two areas. As you breathe in, the diaphragm is going to descend. As the diaphragm descends, it pushes downward on stuff. The stuff that it pushes downward is your viscera, a.k.a. the guts and the goods. If I'm pushing downward and the guts and the goods are moving downward as well, your pelvic floor has to change what it's doing, or your pelvis I should say, in order to accept that downward pressure that's coming from the viscera. In order for that to happen, I need to increase the relative surface area of the pelvic inlet. The pelvic inlet is the top part of the pelvis, the top hole, so to speak. The way that that happens is by counter-nutating the sacrum, tipping the sacrum back, and anteriorly rotating the anominates. This would be your, your, your anominates would be your pelvic bones at the SI joint. These puppies are going to rotate forward. This, if I rotate the anominates forward and spread them apart, is going to increase the relative surface area available on the top part of the pelvis for the viscera to be caught. If your viscera needs to be catch, the pelvic floor you must stretch. So, you're going to do that. Now, we have to ask ourselves, selves, which joint, which area, which location has more relative motion available? Is it the SI joint? Or is it the lumbosacral complex? Well, I'm glad you asked. At the SI joint, you got about two degrees of motion available. Not a lot. All right, so when I you know, move the bones all wild and crazy, like that's, this is not real, it's just a model. 
The lumbosacral complex in extension has 15 degrees and with flexion has about 55 degrees. Now here's the question of the day. Which numbers are greater than two? Is 55 greater than two? Is 15 greater than two? Go ahead, write your answers down. If you guessed that the numbers 55 and 15 were more than two, you would be correct. So once the two degrees of motion is taken up at the SI joint, you got all this other range of motion available. So the pelvis is going to move as a unit in whatever direction the spine moves. So now we have to ask, what the heck is the lumbar spine doing when I nutate and when I counter nutate? When I nutate the sacrum, the lumbar spine is going to be more relatively lordotic, or it's going to extend, perhaps we could say. If I counter nutate the sacrum, the lumbar spine is going to be less lordotic, or it might move into some degree of flexion. Therefore, if the sacrum counter nutates to make room to catch the downward displacing viscera from the diaphragm descending to pull air in, the lumbar spine has to reduce its lordotic curve or flex to some degree. Now you also have to realize that the amounts might not be much, especially during quiet respiration. And you also have to consider too that I'm getting multi-directional expansion throughout the entire ventral cavity. So when you breathe in, you should have a relative circumferential expansion in the ab wall. Your rib cage should expand as a unit. The pelvis should open up and gap a little bit as a unit. Think like it's expanding in all directions to make room for this increased air volume and the way your body has to change to pull in that air volume. So I would argue that when I breathe in, the lumbar spine has to reduce its lordotic curve in order to accept the viscera. Now, Alex is saying, well, Zach, based on the diaphragmatic attachments, I would think that I would get some lumbar extension. And he's right. If I contract the diaphragm in isolation, there would be some extension occurring in the lumbar spine. And there's a good study that I will link in the show notes, which will be found on zachcouples.com forward slash breathe, um, that you should check out that talks about what is the, the postural function of the diaphragm. A couple things. One, the diaphragm is not acting in isolation. There's other muscles involved. We have to consider what's going on with the pelvic floor and all of these other things. Two, there is a time in which you breathe in that the diaphragm, because of increased concentric contraction, will pull the lumbar spine into extension. That typically happens as the diaphragm descends and goes to flat. Because what you end up seeing is as the diaphragm fully descends, it changes its line of pull on the lower rib cage. What happens is normally, under normal circumstances, as the diaphragm descends, the ribs are going to move outward and upward, the lower rib cage. That would be what we would call the bucket handle, the bucket handle action at the ribs. When the diaphragm goes towards flat, the pull of the diaphragm on the lower rib cage changes. It starts to pull inward and compress the rib cage. When that happens, this is when you start to see ribs start to flare out more. So you get the rib cage getting longer, getting bigger anteriorly and posteriorly. When that happens, that's when you start to see an increase in lumbar extension and subsequent lordosis. The difference is when I talk about the lumbar spine reducing its normal lordotic curve, I'm talking normal respiratory mechanics. When you're talking about the lumbar spine extending as the diaphragm contracts, that is more often than not a compensatory mechanics situation. If the diaphragm goes to flat, you have to extend your lumbar spine to take more air in because that's your only option. To summarize your great question, Alex, 
Lumbar spine ought to reduce its lordotic curve when you inhale to make room for the viscera, and that's because lumbar flexion is associated with sacral counternutation, which is needed to catch the guts and the goods. If you see lumbar lordosis increasing when you breathe in, you're dealing with a compensatory mechanic situation. That's because the diaphragm has fully descended and you've had to extend the lumbar spine in order to get air in. The diaphragm has gone towards less of a respiratory role because now I can use accessory muscles and it's gone more towards a postural role and its predominant postural function within the body is lumbar extension and increasing lordosis.